Belize. So this is the outline for uh, the presentation. So for the the surgical anatomy of the female pelvis, the pelvis is divided into the true and false pelvis by an oblique line passing from the sacral promontory posterior and superior margin of the pubic emphasis corresponding with the iliopectineal line. The, the pelvic brim defines the pelvic inlet. The true pelvis is the area below the pelvic brim and the false pelvis is located above the brim. When the person is standing, the anterior superior iliac spines and pubic symphysis lie parallel to each other, which allows the pelvic inlet face, faces anteriorly, allowing the pressure of the intra-abdominal and intra-pelvic contents to be directed to the bony pelvis rather than the muscles and the fascia. So the, pel the pelvis has three fascia, uh, three layers, one inner, intermediate, and outer. So the inner layer is the lateral rectal wall, covers the lateral rectal wall, the vessels, nerves, and forming part of the denovillier's fascia. The intermediate, the intermediate layer surrounds the uterus and the supporting vessels, while the outer layer is the transversalis fascia, continuous with the endopelvic and lateral pelvic fascia, and is the exit point of the pelvic organs. So the endopelvic fascia extends down from the uterine artery to the fusion of the vagina and the levator ani. The iliac fascia is part of the outer stratum and covers the iliacus and so as muscles. This attaches to the iliac crest and runs down to the tendinous arch and is continuous with the posterior part of the inguinal ligament, pectineal fascia, and obturator fascia. The obturator inter internus and piriformis muscles are covered by the obturator fascia. So the inferior pelvic fascia is continuous with the obturator fascia and the fascia of the podendal canal and covers the levator ani surface. The superior pelvic fascia arises from the outer stratum and obturator fascia. It runs from the pubic symphysis laterally to the ischial spine. The fascia is thinner over the muscles and organs, which allows for more mobility of the muscles and organs. So in the female pelvis, there are six potential spaces. So the vesicovaginal and retrovaginal spaces are in the midline. The vesicovaginal space is contained by the bladder adventitia anteriorly and the vagina posteriorly. This space ends where the vagina fuses, where the vagina fuses with the distal urethra and at the vesicocervical ligament. Another potential space is the pre-vesical space, which lies between the fascia covering the bladder and the endopelvic fascia behind the pubis. This, extend, this space extends laterally to the obliterated umbilical artery. The retrorectal space is between the fascia and the transversalis fascia over the sacrum. Laterally lie the paravesical and pararectal spaces, which are adjacent to their respective organs. So in the female pelvis, there is a, the pouch of Douglas or the rectouterine pouch, which is formed by the fold of, of, of peritoneum that extends between the uterus and the rectum. It is bound by the fornix rectum and uterosacral ligaments. The vesicouterine pouch is demarcated by a fold of the peritoneum, reflected onto the bladder from the uterus, and the peritoneum also forms the uterosacral folds between the pararectal and paravesical fossil. So for the ligaments of the female pelvis, the sacrospinous, sacrotuberous, and the sacroiliac ligaments are significant to the pelvic anatomy. The sacrospinous ligament attached from the ischial spine to the lateral border of the sacrum and crosses in front of the sacrotuberous ligament, fusing with it medially. The sciatic nerve and plexus cover the coccygeous muscle and must be avoided during vault suspension. The sacrotuberous ligament runs from the posterior iliac spine along the sacral border and attaches to the ischial tuberosity. This attaches the ilium and ischium to the sacrum. The greater and less mina run above and below the sacral tuberous ligament. Uh, the sacrospinous ligament lies in continuity with the sacrococcygeal ligament. The fifth lumbar vertebrae is connected to the ilium by the iliolumbar ligament. The other ligaments of the sacral of the female pelvis will be discussed later on. So for the muscles of the 
female pelvis. The pelvic sidewalls are formed by the obturator internus, iliacus, sos major and minor, and levator anticomplex, and the coccygeus. The obturator internus covers most of the lateral pelvic sidewall and passes to the lesser sciatic foramen and attaches to the greater trochanter of the femur. The piriformis muscle covers and pads the pelvic sidewalls posterior laterally. Uh, these are the shown on your screen are the origin, insertion, and action of the said muscles. So for the muscles of the pelvic floor, these are composed of the levator anticomplex and the puborectalis. The sustained resting tone of the pelvic floor muscle supports pelvic viscera, resists increases in intra-abdominal pressure, and is crucial in passive control of urinary and fecal continence. With loss of tone from muscle or nerve injury, there is laxity in the urogenital hiatus, which lessens the horizontal orientation of the levator plate. So for the arterial supply, the internal iliac arteries extend into the pelvic cavity along the posterior wall and provide multiple branches that perfuse the bladder, uterus, vagina, and rectum. The uterus is supplied by the uterine artery, which arises from the anterior branch of the iliac artery. From the internal iliac artery, the uterine artery crosses above and anterior to the ureter, extending medially in the base of the broad and cardinal ligaments to the uterus at the level of the cervix. The tortuous uterine artery spirals up the side of the uterus and branches to anastomose with the ovarian artery and descends to supply the cervix and vagina. The uterine artery passes in front of the ureter, making the ureter vulnerable to injury during hysterectomy. So the corresponding veins are coursed with each arterial branch and drain into the interior internal iliac veins or larger veins. Extensive venous plexuses are associated with the bladder, rectum, vagina, and uterus, called the pelvic plexus of veins. The obturator vein lies posterior to the artery and ureter that drains directly into the internal iliac vein. The superior and inferior gluteal veins, lateral sacral veins, and middle, rect middle rectal and rectal venous plexus drain into the internal iliac vein. The clitoral veins drain into the retropubic plexus. The retropubic plexus drains through the vesical plexus and eventually drains into the internal iliac vein. The external iliac vein is a continuation of the femoral vein and drains the inferior epigastric vein and deep circumflex iliac and pubic veins. So for the somatic innervation of the female pelvis, the sacral plexus is formed from the ventral rami of spinal nerves L4 to L5 and S1 to S4. The sacral plexus supplies motor and sensory innervation to the posterior thigh and lower leg. The pudendal nerve arises from S2 and S3, S2 to S4, and mediates perineal pain. So for autonomic innervation, sympathetic innervation arises from the preganglionic fibers at the T10 to T T12 level. The parasympathetic fibers lie deeper to the sympathetic fibers within the inter immediate stratum and arrestry. So going to the perineum, the anterior uroge urogenital triangle is bound by the pubic symphysis, pubic rami, ischial rami, and deep transverse perineal muscles spanning the ischial tuberosities, while the posterior anal triangle lies behind the line between the ischial tuberosities and contains the anus. The perineal membrane is a sheet of fascia lying between the sides of the pubic arch. The urethra and vagina pass through the urogenital hiatus of the perineal membrane to exit at the vestibule. So the deep space of the urogenital triangle cover contains the urethral sphincter, urethrovaginalis, compressor urethrae, and the deep transverse perineal muscles. The superficial space is made up of the superficial perineal muscles, clitoris, vestibular bulbs, and Bartholin glands. The perineal body contains muscle and collagenous and elastic fibers and is at the central point of the perineum, which is the convergence of the bulbus pongiosus, external anal sphincter, and superficial and deep transverse perineal muscles.
So good uh, good morning po. Um I will be discussing about the female pelvic organs uh which is going to be a review only of our anatomy uh, blood supply uh venous drainage and innervation and the radiographic anatomy of the female pelvis. So um to start off the uterus is a hollow pear-shaped organ, which is normally antiverted, antiflex, and is composed of a uterine body and the cervix. So the body of the uterus has three uh, layers, the outermost layer of which is the perimetium, uh, which is composed of a peritoneum and a thin connective tissue known as the parametrium. So this is the perimetrium. The second layer is the paramyometrium, which is uh, subdivided into three layers, the outer longitudinal, which is continuous with the ovarian and the uh, round ligament, middle circular layer, and inner longitudinal layer. In this uh, layer, it's where you could find the blood vessels and the nerves. Lastly, the endometrium, which is the innermost layer and is also known as the mucosal layer. So the uterine artery uh, is supplied, uh, supplies the uterus and uh, this was uh, previously discussed by my co-intern. Uh, it branches off the from the anterior branch of the internal iliac artery. It crosses the ureter close to the cervix and provides a small branch of the ureter off to the, to the ureter. And it passes through the broad ligament and feeds the fallopian tube and runs from lateral to medial to join the ovarian artery. The uterus drains in to a uterine plexus that runs in the broad ligament and joins the, va the vaginal and uh, ovarian plexus to drain ultimately to the internal iliac vein. Its innervation is from the infer inferior hypogastric plexus and its uh, lymphatic drainage is very complex so it would differ in the organ and the uh, ligament. So for the cervix, uh, it would drain to the external iliac, internal iliac, and sacral nodes. For the upper uterus and the fallopian tube, uh, it would drain to the lateral aortic and paraaortic nodes. Around the round ligament, uh, to the superficial to the external iliac the fundus to the paraaortic and lateral aortic nodes. So another organ would be the fallopian tube, which usually measures about 10 to 12 centimeters in length and they're draped in the broad ligament. So it opens posterior medially and are divided into four parts, the uterine interstitial segment, the isthmus, the ampulla, and the infundibulum. Uh, the fallopian tube is supplied by the ovarian and the uterine artery. It's uh, the uh, it's uh, venous drainage corresponds also to the blood supply. So, so the lateral it's a lobulatory vein, while the middle portion drains into the uterine plexus. The lymphatic drainage, on, on the other hand, has uh, three uh, drainage: the para the paraaortic node, the internal il iliac chain, and the inguinal nodes. Its innervation is from the autonomic fibers from the ovarian and uterine plexus. Uh, next organ would be the ovaries. Uh, it is supported by the meso-ovarium and the ovarian fossa within the posterior peritoneum. And it's bordered by the obliter obliteral umbilical artery, the ureter, and the internal iliac artery. It's attached to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament. And this is suspended by the infundibulopelvic ligament or the suspensory ligament and the uterus by the ovarian ligament. So the ovarian artery uh, arises directly from the aorta and it passes into the uh, suspensory ligament, into the hilum of the ovary. The, the artery then passes through the uh, broad ligament, which supplies the fallopian tube and joins the umbilical artery. It has several uh, drainage, so it drains to the pampiniform plexus merging into the ovarian vein. Uh, the right ovarian vein drains directly to the inferior vena cava, while the left ovarian vein uh, drains into the left renal vein. 
Uh, its innervation is from the ovarian and inferior mesenteric plexus, and the lateral drainage is to the lateral aortic and pre-aortic nodes. So another organ would be the vagina, which is uh, composed of a mucous membrane and a lamina propria that are fixed to the uh, muscular layer. So the muscle of the vagina has an outer longitudinal and uh, inner circular layer that are attached to the uh, retrovesical fascia bilaterally. So the muscle is lined um, by non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium and is attached anteriorly to the levator ani, ani, ani to the arcus tendineus posteriorly to the rectal vaginal septum. So it's important to note that uh, the ureters pass close to the lateral fornices and are anterior as they enter the bladder. So access to the retropubic space can be obtained by uh, incising the anterior part of the vagina. So usually the uh, on either side of the urethra. And uh, this is the typical dissection for a retropubic sling. So the, the vaginal vessels and the nerves lie on the anterolateral surface of the vagina deep to the AT ATFT. So the arterial supply would correspond to the different parts of the vagina. So for the superior, uh, it supplied the uterine arteries, the middle and inferior by the vaginal arteries, and the inferior by the internal pudendal artery. So same with lymphatic drainage, it's divided into three, uh, superior by the internal and external iliac lymph nodes, middle by the internal and internal iliac lymph nodes, and inferior by the sacral common iliac and superficial lymph nodes. The vagina also has an autonomic uh, innervation from the uterovaginal plexus, composed of the sympathetic, parasympathetic, and visceral afferent fibers, which travels at the base of the broad ligament. The lower one-fourth of the vagina has somatic innervation from the podendal nerve and is sensitive to touch and temperature change. Um, the pubo, uh, the pubo vesicle ligaments help support the urethra and bladder neck, uh, but may also play a role in uh, relaxation of the bladder neck during micturation, according to studies. While the anterior vagina provides support to the urethra through its lateral attachment to the pubococcidus and the ATFT, the parametrium and the paracolpium. On the other hand, uh, provide support to the vagina and the uterus while the uh, serves cardinal ligament and the uterosacral ligaments uh, would provide uh, support to the uterus cervix and the vagina. So there was this, uh, there was student Delancey, uh, wherein there are three levels of support for the, pel for the pelvis. So level one support would, um, would support the uterus and the vaginal apex. Uh, the round, the broad and round ligaments um, were mentioned that they do not uh, significantly play a role in pelvic organ support. Level two support runs from the paravaginal attach attachments to the arcus tendineus rectovaginalis. So, uh, anterior wall prolapse results from the loss of uh, this level. Level 3 support, on the other hand, is created by the distal vaginal attachments to the levator muscles laterally, anteriorly to the urethra, and posteriorly to the cranial body. This, this also provides foundation to the urethra, and uh, any disruption would lead to hypermobility of the urethra. Uh, last organ to be discussed is the uh, urethra, which uh, measures about 4 cm long and 6 mm in diameter in an adult female. Uh, it runs anteroinferiorly behind the pubic symphysis and is embedded in the anterior vaginal wall. It's suspended beneath the pubis posteriorly 
the pubourethral ligaments anteriorly and the suspen and the suspensory ligaments of the clitoris. Aside from uh, urine passage, the anterior and posterior walls of the urethra are uh, usually in apposition. So exceptions to this would include uh, congenital defects such as hypospadias, wherein the urethra opens into the vagina and uh, epispadias, uh, where there is a fissure in the upper part of the urethra. So the wall of the female pelvis consists of fain of an outer circular muscular layer and an inner longitudinal muscular layer where lines the lumen and is continuous with the bladder mucosa uh, which constitutes the involuntary urethral uh, sphincter. So in this photo, uh, the internal sphincter isn't seen but it is uh, in a continuation of the detrusor muscle and is made up of uh, smooth muscle. Its action is involuntary or autonomic. The female external sphincter, on the other hand, is anatomically separated from the uh, adjacent periurethral striated muscles of the anterior pelvic floor. So, at the distal two thirds of the urethra, uh, the voluntary sphincter is present and is composed of the uh, striated muscle. On the proximal portion, uh, it's or the mid urethra, yeah, it is formed by a horseshoe around. It forms a horseshoe around the urethra. Uh, this is where the closing pressure is highest. So when the when they contract, uh, the the urethra usually closes against the anterior part of the vaginal wall. Uh, the additional fibers surrounding the urethra and the vagina are composed of the urethrovaginal sphincter. So when the, these fibers uh, contract, they tighten the hiatus of the uh, urogenital part. So the pubic exodus runs along with the urethra bilaterally and it increases the resistance in the urethra. So the urethra has three anatomical layers, uh, epithelium, the submucosa, and mucosa. Uh, it's important to note here that in the mucosal and the submucosal layer, this is where the urethral, there is urethral closure pressure and is estrogen dependent. So the lamina propria is a thin layer of the connective tissue uh, that forms the, po the part of the moist lining of the mucosa. The urethra is made up of transitional epithelium with multiple infoldings, which uh, allows it to distend and co-optation and co upon closure. The epithelium transitions to pseudostratified and squamous epithelium at the most distal part of the urethra. The urethra is supplied by the vaginal arteries. Uh, some supply would come from the inferior vesicle arteries and the internal pudendal arteries, while its drainage is to the inferior, middle, and superior vesicle veins, the clitoral plexus, and into the, into the internal veins. For the distal one-third, um, it drains into the superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes, while the proximal two-thirds of the urethra would drain in, into the internal and obturator lymph nodes. So the next uh, discussion would focus on uh, the different radiographic imaging of the female pelvis. So first is the most common, is the most commonly used imaging, which is the uh, ultrasound, which is uh, readily available and is very helpful in evaluating pelvic anatomy and pathology. So there are several uh, kinds of ultrasound. Uh, could be a transabdominal, transperineal, transrectal, uh, translabial, and transvaginal. But the most commonly used is the transperineal or the translabial. So on the picture to your right, um, Letter A would, uh, letter A is an example of a transducer placement. And what we see is letter B, field of vision. So most common organs seen are the pubic symphysis, the bladder, the neck, the vagina, the rectum, and the anal canal. Um, other, uh, other uses of uh, ultrasound 
uh, is in transvaginal uh, urethral blocking agents and urethral implants. So in the in an ultrasound also, uh, a bladder wall thickness and pelvic organ prolapse can also be measured. So this on the picture to your left is an example of a uh, 2D transable ultrasound in a mid-sagittal plane wherein you could visualize the uh, pubic symphysis, the urethra, the vagina, and the bladder. On the picture to your right is uh, an example of the an anorectal ultrasound, which is very useful in evaluating anal sphincter, um, anal sphincter defects in association with uh, fecal incontinence. So in this photo, um, the internal anal sphincter are seen as an echogenic discontinuity in a hypoechoic muscle between the vagina and the rectum. The external anal sphincter um, is, see, is seen here as an hypoechoic lesion in a normally echogenic structure. So any uh, a sphincter in spasm or that is hypertrophied can appear thickened. So this is an example. So another modality would be a uh, pelvic MRI, which is the most comprehensive and most conclusive imaging modality of uh, picturing the uh, female pelvis without the use of radiation. Uh, it, is, it, is, it provides a well-delineated uh, imaging quality of tissues, uh, such as uh, uh, in different uh, water contents such as muscle fat, uh, fluids, and, and blood. So this, uh, the picture to your right is an example of a uh, pelvic floor imaging wherein they used um, a single shot turbo spin and single shot fast echo, spin echo, which is a T2 weighted sequence that provides uh, non-invasive multiplanar surveys of the abdomen and the, and the pelvis. So T1-weighted imaging with gadolinium contrast is very useful in diagnosing, uh, in visualizing uh, the kidneys and the ureters, while T2-weighted imaging uh, is useful to differentiate and assess masses, uh, cyst parenchyma, parenchyma, and is the best imaging technique to visualize urethral diverticula in different masses. So this picture is just an example of a pelvic MRI that uh, differentiates the different cystic lesions in the vagina and the urethra. So the picture to your left is a T2-weighted MRI, which visualizes the three zones of the uterus, the endometrium, the junctional zone, and the myometrium. The endometrium in this photo um, has a high signal, whereas the junctional zone part has low signal, and the myometrium part has medium to high signal. So most common indications for MRI would include uh, identifying and characterizing leomyomata, uh, assessment of leomyomas and its treatment response and staging of endometrial and cervical malignancies. So MRI could also be uh, very helpful in diagnosing and staging a uh, pelvic organ prolapse. So usually these Im images um, are often looped as a stack and are measured to find uh, anatomic landmarks to determine the grade of the pelvic organ prolapse and pelvic floor relaxation. So usually they uh, obtain, uh, the measurements are obtained in including the H line or the levator hiatus width, which is measured from the pubis, pubis to the posterior anal canal. The M line or the muscular pelvic floor relaxation runs perpendicular to the pubococcidial line. While the uh, O classification is assigned to um, note the degree of prolapse beyond the H line. So as zero, 
one, two, and three. Or no, mild, moderate, and severe. So another imaging would uh, be a fluoroscopy, which is often used to obtain a real-time imaging, especially to uh, capture dynamic pictures of the bladder and the urethra during voiding. So a low-dose imaging deep passes through the image intensifier and high-resolution monitor to create the image. A cystogram is, uh, is performed by usually taking uh, static images of the bladder in different views after contrast is instilled and it's followed by a post-drainage picture. This modality is very uh, useful in diagnosing bladder perforations, uh, intravesical filling defects, and diverticula. So uh, in fluorosco fluoroscopy, a uh, low pressure fistulas of the bladder may also be visualized. So another radiographic technique would be the voiding cystourethrogram. Uh, this also takes a picture same as with the fluoroscopy uh, during filling and voiding, post contrast installation into the into the bladder, and after subsequent catheter removal. Uh, this modality may be used concurrently with urodynamics uh, to dynamically correlate it with the. Uh, radiographic findings. Uh, VCOG imaging is very helpful in evaluating uh, the ure urethra and bladder outlet. It may also aid in, in the diagnosis of uh, vesicle ureteral reflu reflux, vesicle fistulas, urethral obstructions, diverticulum, and uh, high grade cystocils may also be diagnosed with a VCOG. Lastly, um, the endoscopic imaging, so the normal urethra would measure 14 to 20 in caliber and usually evaluated with a rigid or flexible cystoscope. So translabel, transrectal, and transvaginal ultrasound have been used for the diagnosis of urethral injury and structure. So the entire urethra, the external sphincter, the bladder neck are visualized in a retrograde and anterograde fashion with a 0 to 30 degree lens while irrigation is flowing to distend the urethra. The urethra is uh, closely evaluated in women uh, with uh, recurrent UTI, uh, dysuria, and obstruction. So cytoscopy, on the other hand, is valuable for uh, visualization of foreign body stones and uh, ostia of uh, urethral diverticulum. So, key points in, um, in the report, uh, translabial ultrasound is uh, used in visualization of transvaginal mesh, urethral bulking agents, and implants. Uh, MRI is uh, the most comprehensive and conclusive imaging of the female pelvis uh, without the use of uh, radiation. Well, created imaging of the MRI would be uh, the best technique to visualize localized and localized urethral diverticula and differentiate them from benign vaginal masses. Thank you. Okay. Kung may tutunan kayo sa ano natin na sa lecture. So, five items lang naman yan. So, tingnan natin.
Guys, <laughs> please participate. Ah. This is Maf. Maf, can you answer question number one? Eh, kuna. You show me one. Eh, okay, kita nade. The majority answered anteriorly. Maf, tama ba? No question. <laughs> Laterally. Hello. Hello, Maf Mafi. Narinig mo na yung water under the bridge? Hindi pa po daw. So water is the ureter. Yeah, water under the bridge. So under ang ureter. Okay. So in relation to the ureter and vessels, anterior siya. Uh, Vince, number two. Ay, may sagot na pala eh. Nakikita nyo pala yung sagot, no? Yes, sir. Hindi, yun yung majority yung sagot. Kaya, nag-ano. Number two, Vince. Anong sagot? Uh, Levitor anima cell, sir, make up the largest portion of the pelvic cavity. It consists of the iliocoxidus, puberectalis, and pubococcygeus. Oh, be correct. Ah, uh, si no next. Si from Sir Grano. Alphabet. Alphabet. I heard the guy. Number three. Letter D po is the male homologue of the sperm. Letter C. So what is the male homologue of the spermatic cord?
Ay, naka, nakamute ko na ako. Number four, Vince. Mafi, uh, Mafi, sagutin mo yung mail uh, homologue of the spermatic word. Sir? Vince, number four. Uh, the transversalis fascia is uh, I answered here, sir, part of the outer stratum. Ah, uh, okay. Ano daw, BNC daw yan. BNC. Outer, no? Hindi yan. Okay. Last question, number five. Debate or any? Eh, important yan. Tinatanggol lagi. Mafi, anong sagot yan? Attachment. Sa five po, Doc? Oo. Uh, uh, <laughs> Alam ko. D. D. Nahanap mo na yung mail. Nah, D, D ang sagot dyan. D. Nahanap mo na yung mail homologue of the spermatic cord. Doc pa lang. Wala pa tayong embryo, no? Wala pa po. Ah, so doc. Anong reporting natin sa ano? Sa Friday? Yung ano po doc, uh, parang report namin pero mail po. Mail pen. Ikaw ulit? Ikaw ulit? Uh, si Baronia po tsaka si Bonifacio na yun doc. Ah, okay. Sige. Baka i-postpone ko yun. Baka iba yung reporting natin sa Friday. Balitaan kita Vince. So, attendance tayo. Tapos, uh, residents. All residents, please stay. One, two, three, four, three. Okay. Thank you. Uh, please stay, residents. Uh, respectfully asking you to. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Angela? Yes, no. Wala ka. Ah, sorry po. Jed, please log out. Oh guys, anong excuse nyo? Bakit ako na lang lagi umaaten? Sa kayo yung nandito sa office, lagi na lang yung BMMC Urology. Late pa kayo. Do I need to remind you every Wednesday and Friday? Do I need to send you, Glennis, the links? Di ba obvious? Isa lang yung link natin. Alam ko lang, pare-pares lang tayo may ginagawa. Pare-pares lang tayong uninterested. But we have to. Residente tayo eh. Hindi naman tayo empleyado lang eh. We need to do this para sa atin academically. Kami nandito, may ginagawa kami. Kaya ako na late. Nagsabi ako kay Ryan. Hindi naman kayo seniors. Ang seniors lang talaga si Ryan tsaka si Ralph tsaka ako. So kung may excuse kayo, sabihin nyo si Joey tsaka si, si Vino, at least yung kapatid silang na to tell us na, Sir, we can't attend today. Hatid ko si Dr. Solomon. Sorry, sir. For ER ako. Kasi obviously napaka-understanding naman namin. So at least, huwag niyo lang ako gugulatin. For the past week, ako lang yung umaaten sa yung urology. I have to remind them na be 15, 15 minutes to be early. Ikaw, Daryl, ano excuse mo? May game. Uh, sir, nagka-canvas kami ng gamit para sa bahay sa tabi natin. Oh, edi, please tell me. Sir, hindi ako makaka-attend. Ilahad kami ni Mama. Oh, hindi mo ma mahirap ba yun? Kesa ako yung... Nalimot ako din sa re-lecture, sir. Oh, aminado ako, ako din nakalimutan ko, ni-remind ako ng intern. But we have to do it, di ba? 
So pag sinabi niya na nag-text si Ryan na umatin, umatin kayo, sabihan niyo rin siya kung hindi kayo makakatin. Kasi huwag kayong umasta na para kayong mga senior, para kayong kami. Siyempre, kailangan din kayo doon. Kaya natin ginagawa to for everyone. O tsaka, pag nandito ka naman, dahil hindi ka naman na yung pinuforce o mati. O, ang parusa nyo, since wala mong umatin sa inyo, sa Friday, kayo mag-report. Gusto ko makita lahat ng residents mag-report. Ikaw muna, Glenn, eh, since ikaw yung... Ikaw, Glenn, ba't wala ka? Sir, hindi ko lang po alam talaga na meron today. Akala ko nag-stop ng... O, if, o every Friday, eh. Ikaw, Glenny, sa Friday, ang report mo, AUA, uh, uh, ano yun? Benign? Benign? Benign prostate. O, madali lang yan. Ikaw, Daryl, NCCM. So, kayong dalawa. Since kayong dalawa yung walang excuse na ma- NCCM sa'yo, Daryl. Glenn, sa'yo yung AUA na kahit 15 minutes lang. Tulong niyo na lang sa amin ni Ralph yan. And sabihan niyo ako pag wala. Kasi nasyak ako, ako lang yung muna dito eh. So make sure eh, umattend everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Adjourn, adjourn. Easy pa na Ernest na i-re-report mo. self satisfaction lang nila wala wala wala